Yeah, Brian, what, what are your thoughts, especially in light of the fact, like we talked before, that this uh, testimony about the letter from the grave, uh, you indicate uh, we'll have to wait to see if it gets admitted into evidence. I mean, that's going to be a lot to overcome for the defense, no? It sounds like it. You know, th this is a case that will probably hinge on the autopsy testimony as well as the forensic photos, certainly during the autopsy. You know, for instance, when someone is, is, is asphyxiated in real life, it's a very violent encounter. It, it's not like what you see on TV. And there are telltale signs that are left. There's tremendous bruising. Um, depending on what was used to cause the asphyxiation, let's say a rope, a cable, someone's hands, there'll be different types of markings. Um, and if I recall correctly, I believe uh, part of the facts of this case is he may have confessed to a fellow inmate that he stood on the victim's back while asphyxiating her. Um, so if he was putting his full man body weight on her back, I'm sure there's some kind of bruising uh, that would have been photographed. Uh, certainly all these things would be consistent and corroborate a theory that he asphyxiated her. Certainly if there's none of that and there is no bruising, that would be helpful to the defense. So I think that's going to be a very key component of this trial. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much.